a note that also the governor's office regarding establishing a quorum by a virtual attendance has expired. We do have a quorum on hand and you can see that we are seated to accommodate the state and federal recommendations regarding social distancing and related to the current public health emergency. We have been throughout the pandemic, we are continuing to streamline our agenda to avoid non-essential items from our consideration. The other required notice, any citizen desiring to address the hospital board should turn in a speaker card to the board secretary. If the citizen comment pertains to an item on the agenda today, the comment will be heard early in the meeting, in this meeting. Otherwise, it will be heard toward the end. Speakers are asked to limit their comments to five minutes. Vendor suppliers or other persons seeking hospital contract awarded on a competitive basis are reminded that their ability to address the board may be restricted by terms of the invitation for bid, request for proposal, or other purchasing criteria. Lastly, the board has established a claims adjustment review panel comprised of representatives of the board, medical staff, administration, legal counsel, to review and negotiate the settlement of claims. Accordingly, the board will not enter entertain comments or discuss or negotiate claims at this meeting. Okay. Uh, first item is uh, seeking approval of the orders of the day. Yes. 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 Please. Yes. Second. Any questions, comments? All in seeking approval. All voting yes. 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 No notes. It carries. Thank you. Seek approval of the minutes. The meeting of February 16th. Second. Comments? All in favor? All by saying yes? yes. Yes. Motion carries. There are no board uh, reports today. The report of the medical staff, Dr. Jack, Jack Lawson, please. <clears throat> Mr. Chairman, uh, uh, you have in front of you uh, a proposed board motion. Um, Dr. Ray Meyer would uh, proposed as chair of the quality committee regarding approval of privileging forms. Raymond, please. Yes. Uh, I have a question. Are we also doing the physician privileging forms? Karen? No. Yeah. Okay, we're not. All right. So we're doing the, the approval the approval of the advanced practice professional privilege forms for cardiothoracic certified nurse midwives, OBGYN certified registered nurse anesthetist, emergency medicine, general and pediatric medicine, neonatology, orthopedics, pulmonary critical care, psychiatry, radiology, surgical operating room, Trauma services, urology, as recommended by the medical executive. Second. All those in favor respond by saying yes. 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 Opposed? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you to uh, Secretary's report, Greg Carter, please. <clears throat> On Monday, April 19th, we will have a future planning committee meeting at 9 a.m. to 10 30. Quality committee, 10 30 until noon. Close the session of the hospital board meeting at 12 30. Board lunch, system issues and financial review, 12 30 to 2. And the board meeting will be at 2 o'clock. Thank you. Thank you, Greg. Treasurer's report, Joe D. Virgilio. Treasurer Joe. I just have one item today, and it's a uh, approval of the bad debt and charity care. I move approval of bad debt and charity care for the month ending February 28, 2021, in the amount of $19,239,000. Second, please. 
All those in favor respond by saying yes. Yes. Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, Joe. Financial highlights, Bill Bolton, or Chief Financial Officer. Good afternoon. I have the financial highlights from February. And just one second while we'll it closes. Okay. So beginning with total revenue in the reading C format. There we go. For the month of February for the system, we had total revenue of 93649000 compared to a budget of 91933000 For the five months ended February, for fiscal year to date, total revenue of 461270000 compared to a budget of 457000 $457 million. Continue with total expenses in the rating agency format for the system. For February, 84,333,000 compared to a budget of 86,005,000. In fiscal year to date, we have total expenses of 424,875,000 compared to a budget of 430,199,000. Moving to operating income for the system in the ratings format. For February, 9,316,000, which generates an operating margin of 9.9% compared to a budget of 5,928,000, we budgeted a 6.4% operating, operating margin. For the fiscal year so far, operating income 36,395,000, which is an operating margin of 7.9%, and it compares to the budget of 26,801,000, which we budgeted so far in operating margin of 5.9%. Moving to statistics for the hospital, and these are all five-month figures through February. Average daily occupancy, 641 patients, compared to a budget of 596 patients. The average acute length of stay, 4.71 days compared to last year, 4.29 days. Admissions through five months, 18,222 compared to a budget of 18,456. So far this fiscal year, we've had 9,665 surgery cases compared to a budget of 10,425. And through five months, we've had 1,555 births compared to a budget of 1,653. Continuous statistics. The outpatient registrations through five months, 201,332 compared to a budget of 208,177. And registrations in our two emergency care centers, 44,680, compared to a budget of 53,081. And so far through five months, our case mix index for all patients is 1.89, and for Medicare patients, 2.03. That concludes my report. Thank you, Bill. Uh, committee reports, governance, the effectiveness committee. Ready. Uh, the Governance Effectiveness Committee met on last Wednesday, March the 10th. Uh, the first item was the committee discussed the appointment of community members to the board's standing committees. Uh, prior to making that selection, it was, suge uh, it was suggested and discussed that term limits for committee members might bring new ideas and broader community engagement. After discussion, the committee agreed the term limits made sense, and so for that reason, I have this motion. I move approval of an, of an amendment to the board policy regarding term of community members of board standing committees to establish term limits for community members to two two-year terms per committee assignment 
beginning effective with this current term as recommended by the Governance Effectiveness Committee. Can I have a second, please? Yes. All those in favor, by saying yes. Yes. Opposed, motion carries. Continue, Joe, please. All right, next the committee discussed the candidates who had submitted their names for consideration for community service on the various committees and heard from the chair of each committee regarding their preferences. As to each committee, the members discussed and selected two members to recommend for appointment. Consistent with that uh, discussion and action, I move approval of the slate of community members for appointment to the various board committees as follows. For audit, audit committee, Dorothy Hill and Dr. John Strausser. For the HR committee, Donna Barkham and Janet Stern Solomon. For the finance committee, Richard Bratton and Frank Flesher. For the Mission and Planning Committee, Bill uh, William Noonan and Stephen Schwabe. And for the Investment Committee, John Forsh and Anna Nakaranik. Can I have a second, please? Second. All those in favor respond by saying yes. 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 Motion carries. Thank you, Joe. All right. Next, um, we asked Mrs. Kalish, our chief uh, legal officer, to talk to the board or remind the board that along, although any meeting at which two or more board members are present to discuss board minutes, uh, to discuss board minutes must be noticed with minutes taken that Florida Attorney General has provided consistent guidance on gatherings that do not constitute public meetings, such as community events and panel discussions. Board members are reminded that while attendance and speaking at these kinds of gatherings is permissible, that they can never be used as a replacement for a public meeting and board members should be consist, uh, conscientious, should be conscious of not engaging in debate or discussion among themselves around issues they will be considering as board members except at publicly noticed meetings. And finally, the committee heard from attorney uh, Jennifer I guess it's blown, uh, an election and campaign finance expert from Tallahassee uh, manage, who management engaged to provide guidance on Florida law regarding public activity by public entities, a uh, political activity by public entities. Mrs. Bloom uh, presented this presentation, discussed the evolution of Florida law on the use of public funds for political activity, the scope of scope of clearly protected activity and the contours of prohibited activity. It should also be noted that prior to Mrs. Bloom's presentation, Mr. Berger reported that the Doctors Garden Association had voted to return to the district any funds in its account after it satisfies all of its operating expenses. And that concludes my report. Thank you, Joe. Next up, Investment Committee Chair Frank Hudson. Frank, please. <coughs> The investment committee met this morning. The minutes of the September 21st investment committee were approved. Bill Wojan, the CFO, updated the committee on the board designated fund and investment results as of December 31st. The enhanced cash fund had a return of 1.24% for the calendar year 2020. The intermediate fund had a return of 6.67% for the calendar year 2020. Both portfolios are invested in high quality securities. There's no motion for this item. It was for information only. Our second uh, item we discussed was a presentation by Tim Sand of Pavilion, which is a part of the Mercer Group, reported on the market performance for the fourth quarter and full year of 2020. Mr. Sand discussed the performance drivers, economic fundamentals, and risk factors in the economy. He also reported that the retirement plan portfolio assets gained 10.88% during the fourth quarter of 2020, which brought the calendar year return to 10.75 for 2020, which was four basis points higher than the policy index. Mr. Sand reported that as of December 31st, the retirement plan fund at a market value of $430 million. Mr. Sam reported that for the month of January, the retirement plan portfolio assets 
lost 0.42%, which underperformed the benchmark by 59 basis points. Finally, Mr. Sant presented the results and recommendations resulting from an asset allocation review he prepared. He discussed the historical returns of the various asset classes and indexes and presented what his firm expects the asset classes to return in future years. Mr. Sant presented options for modification to the asset allocation and the impacts these modifications would have unexpected return, standard deviation of return, and return risk ratio. The committee discussed his findings and recommendations. And I have a motion uh, from those discussions that I'd like to propose that the asset allocation percentages by class for the assets of the retirement plan be rebalanced as follows. And I will just put the recommended amount for U.S. large cap uh, stocks, 26%. U.S. small cap stocks, 7%. Develop international uh, equities, 21%. Emerging market equity, 11%. Poor plus fixed income, 15%. Real estate, 5%. We are reducing bank loans to 0%. Emerging market debt, 5%. MLPs, which is master limited uh, partnerships related to the energy sector, reducing to 0%. And increasing hedge funds from 5% to 10%. That should balance at 100%. That's so good. I have a second, please. All those in favor respond by saying yes. Yes. Opposed? The motion carries. Thank you, Tran. This concludes my report. Thank you. Next up, our president's report, David Berenger, president and CEO. David. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Bill, you're going to see the driver. So I'm going to start um, on our, our organizational report card, uh, as I do each month, and uh, we'll look at our five uh, different areas of focus. Uh, the first being its service. Uh, we have a uh, goal of having our uh, likelihood of recommending um, number of services greater than or equal to uh, 75th percentile of, of eight out of our 10 that we measure. I'm happy to report that we are hitting that goal of eight out of 10 right now, and I'll show you the detail here on the next page uh, in a minute. In the people pillar, uh, we have our new hire retention, which is our percentage of regular full-time and part-time employees that have been hired within, uh, during FY 2021, that are gonna still be employed as of September 30th, 2021. We have a goal of having 83% of those uh, retained. Um, happy to report we're exceeding that at this point as well at 92.12%. In the quality section, we have a goal of having our infection prevention, um, which is our combined overall standardized infection rate of being less than 0.88. I'm happy to report that we are um, exceeding that at 0.68. Uh, just to remind the board that 1.0 is the national average or the expected number. So we're already setting our goal quite a bit less than that uh, and, and we're doing even better. In the finance section, you heard a financial report by uh, our CFO, Bill Wojan, uh, earlier. Uh, we have our organizational goal of having our operating margin be our, which is a 5.5% of our budget. We are projecting that uh, at this point to be, to exceed that at 6.3% for the year. And then finally, in the growth goal, we have two goals um, there. We have the first one is our inpatient admissions and opt, um, observation um, outpatients. Uh, being at 51,164. Uh, we are coming in short of that at this point. At 50, 000, we're projecting short of that at 50,136. And our outpatients at 970, goal 977,000. We are also projecting to be a bit short of that at this point at 946,000. Turning the page, I will look a little bit more detail in our patient experience report card. Uh, once again, to orient you, uh, we, we look at this for likelihood of recommending is on the far left, and you see our 10 different um, areas that we look at. Uh, the next column over is what our the SMH's uh, department scores are. The next column over is the national median score, and then finally what we compare ourselves against is the 75th percentile score. 
Uh, we are meeting um, eight out of 10 in the 75th per, um, uh, percentile. Uh, the two that are falling a little short are the NICU uh, and the emergency center um, and the main ER, um, which came in at 81 versus 86 and the NICU at 92 versus 95. Uh, I will tell you um, just a little nuance to this. These are these are our actual live scores, but the national median scores are still based on a prior a year prior. So what you have a bit of a is normally that that's not a big deal. But when you have a COVID year, we have COVID in our numbers, but they're not in the national numbers yet. And I think that'll probably be another six months before the national numbers have COVID in it, which could change things fairly dramatically. We were um, just flipping the page. We were named one of the world's best hospitals once again. So Sarasota Memorial recently was named one of the world's best hospitals for the third year in a row in a global ranking compiled by Newsweek magazine. SMH was one of 13 Florida hospitals to make the list, which spotlights 2,000 hospitals across 25 countries. Hospitals were selected based on performance indicators that include low mortality, complication and readmission rates, as well as recommendations from medical professionals and patient survey results. Next, we've had some changes in our visitation um, going as we continue to look at our uh, work through the pandemic. So throughout the pandemic, SMH has monitored uh, and adjusted visitation policies to help keep everybody safe. The hospital recently expanded visitation to allow um, most inpatients to have two visitors per day from 1 to 6 o'clock, 1 p.m. to 1 to 6 p.m. Uh, loved ones who cannot visit are encouraged to connect with patients via calls, text, and video calling apps. Other visit visitor safeguards remain in place. All visitors must be 18 years or older and wear a mask, and upon entry, all temperatures are checked. A complete list um, of our guidelines can be found on our website, and you see the link below. Um, I will tell you that we're gonna continue to monitor this and work with our, um, our physicians, um, uh, our physician leadership, uh, to determine when, when we can change this and, and make uh, visitation more accessible to the public, uh, and we're hopeful that that can happen um, as, as we continue to progress through the, the pandemic. Next page is celebrating SMH's certified nurses. March 19th is annual certified nurse day. Uh, with congratulations to more than 660 nurses at SMH who have chosen to become certified in their specialty. Uh, nursing um, specialty certification is an excellent way for nurses to demonstrate their advanced knowledge, skills, and expertise. And I'll just tell you, I know that a lot of them wear their, their whatever you call these things. <laughs> And you'll see a little thing that says certified nurse on it. A lot of them wear that, uh, that are certified. So congratulations if you see them. Next, an update on our Blue Cross and Blue Shield contract. Uh, we're negotiating reasonable administrative terms and fair reimbursement rates uh, with insurance companies every few years as standard practice on provi providers. SMH and First Physicians Group have not yet uh, been able to finalize a contract or no agreement with Blue Cross and Blue Shield. We're making progress in our talks and have agreed to a contract extension through June 30th of 2021 so we can continue working on outstanding issues. And we'll continue to keep the community updated on our progress. Our urgent care is named Thompson Pole. SMH Urgent Care Centers were recently named number one uh, urgent care walk-in center uh, uh, in the 2021 Sar Sarasota Herald Show Reader's Choice Award. Awards, so congratulations to Frank, you, you and your team, Jen Storch, um, who, who were, you know, really run that whole thing there. We appreciate it. Construction progress uh, in Venice. Uh, you can see a couple pictures in front of you. Um, the a majority of the site utilities are substantially completed at this point. Uh, site lighting and irrigation is also in progress. In the hospital, the exterior um, envelope will be complete in the next few months. Drywall, casework, flooring, ceilings, and wall finishes are all in progress. Air handling units, um, equipment startup will occur this month. In the medical office building, the interior framing is complete and mechanical electrical plumbing rough ends are in process. And the campus remains to be on track to be opened in fall 2021. Um, 
So Sharon uh, Roush is here today and uh, gave this report to the board earlier. Sharon, we really appreciate you and your team for everything that you're doing to make this happen. Next up is our Oncology Tower, uh, which you can see on this main campus. You see a couple of aerial photos here. Uh, really has, has been taking shape and form over the last uh, couple of months. Um, it's a, the exterior construction highlights include a new driveway concrete pour, uh, which is in progress. Precast panel water, waterproofing installation inspection, also in progress. Water testing at exterior windows is underway, but the first test uh, it was a success. The glass awning uh, at outdoor seating area uh, is being installed. And also the tower remains on track to be completed once again this fall 2021. Lori Lang is overseeing this project with her team and Lori, we very much appreciate everything you're doing to keep us on track and on time. And that brings me to the conclusion of my report. I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you, David. Uh, there are, there's nothing on the consent agenda. Apparently we have anyone express an interest in addressing the board? No, sir, we do not. Thank you. Up next, legal matters, Carolyn Kalish. Nothing to report. Having completed our agenda, we stand. I would like to thank you, sir. Please. I know there's Mason Air sitting in the audience, and I know the month of February we were busy with a lot of other stuff in our board meeting, and I don't know that we recognize the uh, annual gala that the foundation put on in January, which was extremely successful, and I just want to extend our thanks from the board to Mason Ayers and your staff for a great job. Thank you, Tram. And you set an old time record without anyone being at the Ritz Carlton <laughs> other than David singing. Jimmy singing. <laughs> I didn't know what to say. All right, I'm going to bring it Having completed. Anything else? Having completed our agenda, we stand adjourned. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.